When word of a hot striper bite comes in, you've got to jump on it immediately, as you never know how long it'll last. Such was the case in mid-June when I got a call from Dave Steves of the Goose Hummock Shops, who said that the fishing in Cape Cod Bay, more specifically the waters of Billingsgate Shoal, was on fire. After idling past the jetties, we headed for Billingsgate, a massive sandbar that stretches from Wellfleet Harbor's Great Island all the way to the G1 Bell in Cape Cod Bay, a distance of around five miles. The shoal is a fabled fish magnet and holds big stripers throughout the season. Following the lead of a few turns, it didn't take long to find some action. Got lots of ice on it. Just bouncing it right off the bottom. Well, we're at our first stop of the day. It's a place that's uh, well known to Cape Cod fishermen, Billingsgate Shoal. Right now we're in about 12 feet of water on the top of the shoal and the fish are all lined up along both sides on the top of the shoal. They're all over the place. So you never know what you're gonna get out here. And there's a lot of boats, everyone's enjoying it. It's a nice calm day. Plenty of room for everyone to spread out and fish. It's a, it's a really wonderful spring fishery here on uh, Cape Cod. While the first few fish of the day proved to be schoolies, we eventually found some larger bass that were more than willing to smash topwater lures. In this case, Shimano orcas and drifter docks. Oh, oh man, look at the pack of them behind it. Oh, oh right there. <laughs> cool. That's, oh. That's, a, beauty. That's a beauty. <laughs> oh man. We enjoyed excellent action for about two hours before the ebb tide slackened at which point Dave had a new plan, one that was tailor-made for his shallow draft skiff. The nearby Brewster Flats represent a unique fishery. Here, stripers of all sizes patrol the shallow sand flats beginning in June. Similar to bone fishing, anglers can sight cast to schools and individual fish, which often make blazing runs in the shallow water. Although conditions weren't conducive to sight fishing, we managed to find a channel through the flats where some small bass were feeding on large schools of sand eels. And while the fish weren't big, they were still a lot of fun on fly gear. So when you're fly fishing the flats, I typically bring an eight or nine weight rod depending on the weather. If it's windy, I might bring a, a nine weight, but ideally an eight or nine weight works best with a intermediate sinking line. Our flats range from two feet of water um, to about six feet of water, depending on the stage of the tide. There's a lot of deeper troughs and guzzles that sometimes I'll use a fast sink tip, and that works really well. Um, I'll use fly patterns that mimic sand eels, shrimp, and crabs. And for leaders, I typically use a nine foot tapered fluorocarbon leader in 12 to 16 pound tests. And so, after a few hours on the flats, Dave and I returned to Sasuit Harbor, happy to have enjoyed success on two very different fisheries, all within a six-hour window. You gotta love spring fishing on the Cape.